I passed the Azure AI Engineer Associate exam in just about two days of studying and by taking practice tests. And I passed it with 888. And I'm really proud of it because this is a lucky number as well. And I'm gonna be waiting for that triple fortune that AI Engineering brings. And in this video, I'm gonna go through my preparation for the exam, how the exam went from start to finish, and I'm gonna share with you everything that I learned by taking this exam. I'm also gonna try and answer all of your important questions that you might ask yourself. And at each step, I'm gonna give you tips on how to pass the AI 102 exam. And I keep saying it, but I think cloud certifications are the best way to prove your knowledge nowadays. Because more and more, we actually rely on cloud services to build software. And Azure certifications are very well known for giving you that confidence in order to start and develop Azure applications. Also, they help to prove that specific knowledge to potential employers and also to companies that might need your services. And I know a lot of people that are looking to get certified. And I know that we can worry that they might not mean that much anymore because as more people get them, I know that these certifications may get a little bit diluted, but they will still continue to be crucial in order to show our skills. And as time passes, they will be easier to get you to advice like mine and from other channels that have full study guides. So overall, I think these certifications are great to have because the cost versus benefit is still in our favor. So let's look at the AA102, the Azure Certified AA Engineer Associate Exam. Who should take the certification? Engineers want to build, manage, and deploy AI solutions that leverage Azure AI. And in today's world, every engineer needs to learn how to at least manage AI solutions because they're gonna be present in more and more solutions that we're gonna build. And this is an intermediate level certification, meaning that it's supposed to be difficult to pass. So don't expect to pass it without serious studying or if you haven't worked with Azure AI services. Also between all of the data science and AI certifications, this is the hardest. And this requires the most practical experience out of them all. I've been using Azure for years. And in the last two years, I've been heavily using Azure AI services such as Cognitive Search, Azure OpenAI, Document Intelligence, and AI Vision. And I built about five complex solutions using these and I'm actively using them on a regular basis for smaller projects as well. And having this experience, I still found the exam to be difficult as the questions actually require proper thinking and they require focus. And I think maintaining focus and the fact that we have such short attention spans, this is a problem nowadays. So even if you're experienced, you may need to pay attention because you can easily be tricked if you misread something. The AI 102 exam lasts one hour and 40 minutes and the number of questions varies. And I got 49 questions out of which six were from one case study. And I got the case study first, then I realized that you need to complete all of the case study questions before you can actually move to the rest of the question. This isn't optimal because I really wanted to mark the questions for review so I can actually look at the whole case study at the end of the exam. But unfortunately I had to do the case study first. So my strategy to get through the easy questions first and then come back to the rest of them, it wasn't really working very well. Anyway, I spent about 18 to 20 minutes, so I was good right with time and I didn't have to stress about time for the rest of the test. But when you take the test and if you get the case study first, Try and get through it in about 20 minutes or so because you want to optimize for time. From what I've been reading, others got the case study first as well. So be prepared to start with that. My strategy was to first get through the questions that I was 100% sure of. And for the questions that I wasn't 100% sure of, I would select the answer that I thought was correct and then mark them for review so I can double check them at the end. Now, the reason why you want to provide an answer, even if you're not 100% sure, and this is important as you're gonna see in a bit, is that if you run out of time for any reason, at least you provided an answer and you still have a chance. So provide an answer and then mark them for review and at the end, check the questions that you marked for review. I did this extensively throughout the test as I wanted to save time at the end in order to review them. So I ended up with about 25 minutes at the end in order to review 15 questions that I marked. And I think my strategy was good up until this point, but I spent a lot of this time actually going through the Azure Learn documentation to try and confirm the answers. And this was the problem. So let's talk about the open book. The open book feature allows you to use the Microsoft Learn website during these exams, but only the documentation and not the questions and answers. This is the time where I actually used it at the end and only to try and check the questions that I marked. I knew that it was super time consuming to go through all of this documentation. So I tried to be smart and just prior to the exam, I tried to find a good way to search. I'm gonna come back to this later on and I'm gonna let you know what worked best. But even so, I only managed to check about six questions. Oh, and by the way, I only found the most likely answer for maybe three of those questions. So from the 15 questions that I answered and marked for review, 
I had six that I looked up in the documentation, I had another four or five that I reviewed without it, and then I ran out of time. So you see why it's important to provide an answer even if you mark it for later. If I didn't provide an answer, I would have ended with maybe four or five questions without an answer and that wouldn't have been good. And as I got the time ran out message, I was like, damn, I wish I had like 10 more minutes to review the rest. So the time is tight, right? But it's enough to go through all of the questions once and even twice for some of them. But that open book can be a huge time sink if you try to use it throughout the exam. I personally think it's a great feature if you use it wisely, but otherwise it can do more harm and it can make you run out of time because I used it again for 15 minutes in those docs, right? For six questions and I got the answer, or at least I think I got the answer right for about three of them. And this is not a great use of 15 minutes in a time sensitive exam. So here's what I recommend when it comes to using the open book feature. Try and use it only for REST API questions, methods and clear search terms. Search only for single words and bigrams. From three words onwards, it's gonna be all over the place. The search is really bad, so first try to drill down to the section from product documentation, then Azure, then AI plus machine learning, and then to the specific service that your question is related to. I had more success this way than by searching, which is annoying, right? But it is what it is. Also double quotes don't work in order to match the exact phrase. It's not optimal at all. Now that I think about it, it actually does more harm than good because you kind of dig yourself into a hole trying more and more if you don't find the answer quickly. And it also takes your attention from the big picture. Looking back at it, if you can be disciplined to only search for two minutes you know, per question and then let go if you cannot really find the answer, then it can work for you. Unfortunately, I really get deep into it and I really get locked in and that really doesn't help. And then I burn time for no reason. My advice for those taking this exam is to actually use your time effectively because you have enough time for each question. And actually in practice, you have about 2.2 minutes per question. That's enough because these questions are clear and straightforward. The case study requires more reading, but otherwise you're pretty good. Also, Microsoft designs these exams logically and their goal is the same as yours. They want you to pass, right? Because if you pass, then you're gonna share that on your social media, you're gonna start using their services, you might become an even more dedicated user of their services. So it's their goal to get more people to have this type of certifications. They don't really want to make it too difficult, but it also needs to be difficult enough so that you feel good about yourself when you actually pass. So when you look at these questions, logical thinking is your friend. Because if you think logically about the sequence of actions that are needed, for example, to run a container on an on-prem server. The questions are gonna be very clear and obvious. And here's another tip. Many times the words in the question actually point to the answer very clearly. For example, if it says something about no public access from the internet, the obvious answer is a private endpoint. You don't really need to think too much, right? And these type of questions help a lot because they gain you more time for the difficult ones. And I'm gonna cover how I prepared for the exam, but if you're already on your cloud engineering path, you can check out getthatbash.com, a learning platform that helps you prepare for cloud certification exams. It's currently in beta and we offer both practice exams and AI assistance to help you learn faster. I'm gonna update the AI 102 exam practice tests in the next days with better questions. So by the time you're gonna see this video, the AI 102 practice tests are gonna be the best on the market. So if you're looking for a way to support this channel, this is a way. You can support Decision Forest and you support yourself by learning a new skill. Now, how did I prepare for the exam? First, I wanted to get a feel for the types of questions that I'm gonna get. I used the free practice tests from the exam page and I took only one test last week and I got 94% and I was like, wow, right? But it wasn't really helpful because it made me feel like I was smarter than I was. And I knew this was a hard exam, so obviously the questions in the practice tests aren't as difficult as they should be. I also asked a friend that passed it a week or two ago and he said that those practice tests on Azure Learn are too basic compared to the exam. Anyway, I booked it for the 25th after I originally rescheduled it from the 11th due to some work. And on Monday the 22nd, I still haven't looked at the study guide, so I thought, okay, look, I'm gonna reschedule it again in two days just to make sure that I dedicate the time. And what I like is that you can reschedule it as many times as you want, because when you have a busy schedule, right, it can be quite hard to find the time to prepare. And what works for me, actually, I realized that I need to book them as soon as possible when I find some time, because otherwise I'm just gonna forget about them and I'm just gonna keep postponing. Now, speaking of this, I'm actually thinking to book another one. I'm thinking to do either the 104 or the 305. Which one would make sense first? Let me know down in the comments if you took any of them and what would you recommend? 
I'm also a Databricks Solutions Architect Champion, so I'm thinking that both are great, right? But the 305 might look good next to the other one. So knowing that I have the exam in two days, that really motivated me to start learning. So what I've done was to go through most of the study resources here and through the designing and implementing a Microsoft Azure AI solution course here. And I know it's a lot to cover, but you have everything that you need here. And I know a lot of people recommend some courses and study guides, and I'm really sure that they're good. But regarding studying, the Azure Learn website contains really everything that you need. And I'm going to be real with you and say that without experience in deploying and configuring this type of resources, it's going to be pretty hard to pass it. Also having many years of building software and using cloud solutions, this helped me to form a logical mindset on how to build these cloud solutions. So as Microsoft makes it actually easy for developers with good naming conventions and best practices, it was really easy for me to understand this type of solutions, even if I didn't build all of them. I built solutions using maybe a third of the services that they offer, and that definitely helped. But as a beginner, you're going to need to spend time in the labs from this AI course, right? And you're going to need to deploy your own services with your own subscription. Without that hands-on experience, even if you, for some reason you can pass that exam, it won't be enough to consider yourself an AI engineer. And it's not even about the title, right? It's about the ability. Because companies will appreciate the proof that you passed it, but they will also appreciate your ability to actually build solutions. And they're going to appreciate that ability more than just passing that exam. I think the goal here is not just to pass the exam. The goal is to build your confidence so that you can use these services and then actually go and use them. I think if you fully engage with the study materials, both the theory and the labs, I think you're going to do well. And even if you don't pass on your first attempt, this is not a big deal. You're going to know exactly how to pace yourself better and you're going to get the chance to review the sections that you were the weakest at. And this report actually helps you because you can see all of these categories and what can be improved. Also remember that you have plenty of time. You have an hour and 40 minutes. So take your time to focus on each question. Mark the questions that you're unsure of and return to them later. But always provide an answer so you're covered if you run out of time. You gotta think logically and critically about all of the options and think whether they make sense having in mind the question. Overall, it was a great experience for me and I'm sure that you're gonna do well. If you have questions, pop them down in the comments and I'm gonna reply as soon as possible. I wish you good luck.